I, I really wanted a historical dimension to this book because one of the things I wanted to be very clear about is how important the particularities of culture now are to, or at any time, are to producing the behavior of people who live in that culture. That um, so much of the way we behave is ascribable to expectations, how everybody else behaves, because most of us are enormously governed by convention and cultural norms and what we see around us. And in the realm of altruism, I thought this was particularly important because there is a sense which has been around in our culture for a long time that humans are naturally selfish and therefore they will naturally behave in certain ways. And the word naturally, of course, is very important. I wanted to trace a history of suspicion towards certain kinds of altruism to show that, in fact, this assumption that people are selfish and that people who are, seem to be unselfish must be in some way mentally ill, crazy, hypocritical, twisted, strange in some fashion, is a historical development that has not always existed. Um, it came to pass through, I mean, I trace some, some threads through uh, intellectual culture, through popular culture, through literature, but those are only three of, I'm sure, the many, many threads that contributed to this sus suspicion, which exists now in, in a form that's almost unconscious. Um, that's, why, incidentally, one of the reasons I wanted to use the word do-gooder in this book is because if you say to someone, oh, we have this great suspicion of people who do good deeds, they'll say, well, no, we don't. What are you talking about? But if you use the word do-gooder instantly, everyone knows what you're talking about. Um, so I wanted to trace the history to make it clear to people that this suspicion comes from somewhere, is not inevitably part of the way people think about um, extremely altruistic people, I also wanted to make it clear that in other times and circumstances, people, people's attitudes towards altruism and the way they behave are very, very different. So during wartime or during a crisis, people usually rise to the occasion. It brings out the best in them. And I think that one of the reasons that do-gooders seem so strange to us now is that it's been a very long time in this country since we had conscription for a war that was widely regarded as a just good war, namely the Second World War. Um, there's very few people left alive who had the experience of it being ordinary and normal and expected of everyone to sacrifice significantly, your father, your husband, your brother, for the sake of this larger cause. And I think because that experience of the normalcy of sacrifice, of the ordinariness of being expected to abandon your family for the sake of something larger, because that is such a distant experience for us now, that's one of the reasons that people who do that anyway, who do, who are willing to hold their family in the balance with the needs of strangers, seem so odd to us now.